Hi, I'm Chuck Corbin, uh, Arizona State University, and today we're going to be presenting a dozen reasons for including conceptual physical education in a quality program uh, focused primarily on secondary physical education. Uh, ben Sibley from Appalachian State University is a co-author of this paper. Um, it's also published in uh, Joburg, uh, and we'll give you a reference to that if you want to find out more about that. Also with me and helping with the presentation today is uh, Dr. Pam Kalina from Arizona State University. Uh, Hello. I want to, go, go ahead, Pam. <laughs> I'm Pam Hodges Kalina at Arizona State University. I'm a faculty member in physical education and I worked with Chuck and Ben on this paper that we published in Jopert and also this presentation that we were hoping to give at Shape America in 2020, and we're so happy to see you here today. Thank you. All right, so uh, let's let's get going here. Uh oh, sorry about that, folks. Uh, test my buttons there, but I got them working. All right, let's get going then. What is fitness education? Well, this is the fitness education framework definition. And I'm not going to read much, but I'm going to read this because I want to make sure we're all together on this. Fitness education is a subcomponent of the total physical education program, focusing on helping students acquire knowledge and higher order understanding of health related physical fitness, the product, fitness is the product, as well as the habit of physical activity, other healthy lifestyle, the process or processes that lead to good related and health and wellness throughout life. So that's what we're talking about today, but we're also focusing on conceptual physical education. So what is conceptual physical education? Well, it's a type of fitness education, but it's slightly different in that it typically includes sessions, a textbook, and a, a normal program includes uh, student portfolios that are either print or digital. Uh, actually, conceptual physical education started long before we had fitness education, uh, so it's kind of ironic conceptual fitness education, uh, conceptual physical education now fits under the fitness education umbrella. Conceptual physical education, as I defined it, had its origins in college over 50 years ago, it was initially rejected in textbooks in physical education. It was just assumed that we could never use them for non students. As it turns out, we could, and uh, a class in conceptual physical education, commonly called personal fitness, fitness for concepts of physical education, are not universal in colleges, and uh, this approach has saved many college programs. Uh, there's an article in that uh, Brad Cardinal and I did in 2008, if you're interested in getting more information. This is what the curve looked like for the CPE innovation in college. It started in 70, and it took a while before it took off. But as I mentioned earlier, by 2020, 98% of all colleges have a class like this. And as I mentioned, it saved many programs. The high school period isn't quite as long. It actually started in 1979 with the first high school textbook, which was also rejected by all public. Uh, but uh, Fitness for Life, the book that I did uh, with Lindsay, we convinced Scott Forsman to publish it, and now it's published with Human Kinetics. And, uh, Pam has done research that shows that it's now being required uh, in some form in 13 states. And uh, we did an article for uh, Quest, um, and we'll give you that reference and the handouts associated with this. And basically that black line on there shows how the innovation has been through college. Uh, Standards-based physical education is almost as high Fitness education is about 50% saturated in one form or another, and high school or middle school conceptual physical education uh, is an innovation that is not quite as advanced, but is becoming more popular all the time. In the high school, 
typically the base plan is two days a week in the classroom, three days a week in activity for one semester, but it can be adapted to a variety of schedules for a year, for uh, modules, for a, uh, block plans, AB block plans, and a variety of other uh, approaches. In the middle school, it's typically a nine week class. Um, this is a lot to toss up on the screen at one time. This is actually happens to be the chapters are in Fitness for Life, and it shows what you see. And there are other programs of uh, conceptual physical education, but this gives you some idea of what is covered, including uh, self management skills, goal setting, uh, program planning, how to get started, each of the different types of activity, each of the different types of fitness, including as well, um, body composition, consumer choices, nutrition, and stress management, as well as uh, information about skills and the science of physical activity. That's just a brief overview. Um, the bottom line is, for years, we've been on the defense. We've lost programs in the secondary schools when people decide to drop them because of testing or lack of money. And we believe that it's time to go on the offense. And we want to tell you about 12 good reasons for not just defending your program, but showing that your program uh, is, is something that is defensible and something that has evidence to show that it's work. It's an evidence-based program. So I'm going to turn it over to Pam, and she's going to discuss a, a few of the, uh, these 12 reasons. Hello again. The first reason for CPE programs is to help students be physically active. Being physically active is the overarching goal of quality physical education, physical literacy, as well as national guidelines for all Americans. Numerous research studies also indicate that physical activity is good for the brain. For example, it helps with executive function and specifically attention. Next slide, please. The most recent content standards for physical education for Shape, from Shape America indicate that students who meet the outcomes for five basic standards are considered to be physically literate. This includes being physically active and fit, exhibiting responsible personal and social behavior, having skill, valuing physical activity, and knowing about knowledge as applied to movement, as well as the health benefits of physical activity. Next slide, please. The second major reason for CPE is that it helps students meet state and national content standards, as well as the fitness education benchmarks. States and local school districts often judge program effectiveness on the basis of a program's ability to meet these outcomes and benchmarks. Next slide, please. The third reason to use CPE programs is that they have an established philosophy. The HELP philosophy is the foundation for CPE programs, also for fitness testing programs such as Fitnessgram and the Physical Best programs. HELP stands for Health and Healthy Behaviors for Everyone for a Lifetime that are Personal. This philosophy is focused on meeting the personal needs of students through a lifetime of participation in physical activity and adoption of healthy behaviors. Next slide, please. The fourth reason to use CPE programs is to help students achieve higher order learning objectives. CPE programs guide them towards being good consumers, problem solvers, and decision makers. As part of developing physical literacy, students are learning how to learn. Next slide, please. Another example of developing higher order thinking skills and CPE programs is applying the stairway to lifetime fitness and wellness. In conceptual physical education, students can move from being dependent to being independent decision makers. 
They're learning to understand and apply concepts and principles to use self-management skills, such as self-assessments and goal setting, and to analyze and evaluate their own behaviors. Next slide, please. The fifth reason for CPA, CPE programs are based on sound learning theories. These theories support that students can become motivated and confident in their ability to adopt a healthy lifestyle throughout their life. Next slide, please. Briefly, social, cognitive, and learning theories, they focus on self-efficacy and self-motivation, as well as positive expectations for teachers and students. In self-determination theory, the focus is on developing autonomy and intrinsic motivation, or the ability to make independent decisions. In the health beliefs model, it is the framework for behavior change. It is important that people first believe that behaviors have harmful effects. Next, they need to understand that change can solve those problems and that they have the ability to adopt healthy behaviors. And finally, the stages of change model suggests that health behavior change occurs over time and that self-management skills, such as those taught in CPE, will help, help students and individuals move through those stages of change towards positive health. Thank you. Next slide. The sixth reason to use CPE programs is to complement other fitness education programs, including whole of school health programs, for example, the comprehensive school physical activity program, as well as fitness testing programs such as Fitness Gram and other um, fitness education programs such as the Physical Best program. In general, all fitness education programs have similar objectives. Some school districts use Physical Best at the elementary school level and then a CPE program at the secondary level. Next slide, please. The seventh reason to use CPE programs is that they complement other quality physical education programs. Various program models offer a variety of complementary approaches to planning a comprehensive quality physical education program that focuses on adopting lifelong physical activity and healthy behaviors. It is very important to note that CPE programs do not compete with other innovative secondary programs. They provide healthy behavior foundational information for use in other parts of a quality physical education program. Chuck? All righty, I'm gonna take over for the next few here and uh, we'll do a little uh, song and dance where we uh, go back and forth between presenters. The eighth reason is CPE programs provide for academic connections and social emotional learning. Um, we have a special feature, for example, in Fitness for Life where we do math, science, English, uh, language arts, and nutrition. And these are important. For example, in Florida, academic connections matter. In their personal fitness class that they have, they require uh, certain health standards and certain other uh, academic standards such as math and science and English language arts as well as physical education as criteria for their courses. Also we know that a very popular thing right now is SEL, social emotional learning, and I show the CASEL model for that. Um, actually physical education has been doing social emotional learning for, for years and, and com uh, comprehend Physical education uh, has not just done that, but fitness education program as well, uh, teach self-management skills, empathy, diversity, communication, social support, conflict uh, resolution, and so forth. So uh, this is uh, uh, a way that we do things other than uh, just uh, physical education, but keeping physical education paramount. I had to pause there a minute to put my uh, video up there. Okay, 
The ninth reason is that uh, our programs provide opportunities for assessment and accountability. Uh, for example, uh, formative assessment is a type of assessment that we do to see um, uh, how students are going and provide feedback as they move through an educational program. Uh, in this uh, case, uh, conceptual physical education, quizzes, tests, worksheets, and as I mentioned, uh, portfolios, um, so that we can see what the student is doing and provide feedback. Summative assessment, and, and administrators care a lot about this, is the overall view of how the student has performed and what the student has learned at the end of a unit or at the end of a semester or at the end of the year or for however long your uh, conceptual physical education program lasts. Uh, we think that portfolios are a very big part of this and recently we've been able to move from print only to digital formats using activity sheets, quizzes, uh, tests, projects for example and we offer uh, chapter projects, help students uh, use video, art, music and other things as part of their portfolio to show parents, administrators, and the end outcomes that students have achieved in conceptual physical education. I might also uh, point out that uh, one of the advantages that we have now ebooks, digital portfolios, and ways of using technology on all platforms uh, for teaching conceptual physical education. Reason number 10, conceptual physical education pro programs enhance physical education reputation and teacher self-esteem. This is something that we didn't know about uh, when we started, that Pam and I had done a lot of workshops and we, the teacher, how does the teachers, when they start teaching this kind of information, especially classroom sessions, where they can effectively spend a lot of time teaching concepts and, and doing classroom discussions and so forth, uh, begin to see themselves as experts and they, uh, this improves their status, they tell us, with parents, teachers, and administrators, and often they get invited uh, to give speeches to the Rotary Club and to others, and even help lead uh, uh, programs of fitness and wellness uh, for other teachers. Um, and uh, it also gives credibility, academic credibility, uh, to the program, and I'm going to talk about San Francisco Unified School District later about a, an, an a elective that they've uh, implemented. In fact, here we go. What they have done is provided, they require a CPE program for everybody, but they have a second one, Fitness for Life 2, that offers students a chance to take this class and use it as a proved elective for admission to the University of California. And uh, you can check out the San Francisco Unified School District website uh, to learn more about this. I think that's pretty exciting. The 11th reason is C CPE programs have support from medical and public health experts. The National Academy of Kinesiology has endorsed it. The American College of Sports Medicine uh, is uh, has uh, supported this kind of program. There are many articles in the published literature from public health experts, one of which is from a medical doctor who runs a cardiac clinic in Colorado, Dr. Jeff Boone, who has written articles noting the importance of uh, this kind of thing and recommending it. Uh, research in Texas shows that when these programs are implemented over time, uh, teachers report that they support the objectives of conceptual physical education. And finally, number 12, the number dozen does it, it works. And I'm going to give you just research from one study and then a few others at the end that shows that conceptual physical education programs work. There is evidence to support them. I'm reporting on Project active team done at Mountain Point High School in Phoenix, Arizona. And for actually 24 years, we've been studying students who took Fitness for Life as freshmen 24 years ago. And we followed them until 
uh, 20 years after they graduated, so four years in school and then 20 years later, and they use the Fitness for Life model and text, and they are still using this in their school. So what did they find? Well, they found a number of things. And I'm just showing you a small segment of this, and I just chose this slide for girls. The one for boys looks very similar. And this is, what is the percentage of boys, uh, of girls in this case, who are inactive? And so you can see that for CPE, the, act, the inactivity is much lower than the control group of traditional physical education or a national sample of age appropriate peers. This was when they were juniors and seniors. In other words, two to three years after they took the class as freshmen. Uh-oh, we jumped ahead there. And this one is a second study that was done one to two years after graduation. And again, what we show is CPE students are much less likely to be inactive. And for girls, there was also a muscle fitness benefit. The data for boys were very similar and there were moderate and vigorous benefits. This can be uh, found in the study in the Journal of Physical Activity and Health that Pam and Henry Yu and I did and published in uh, 2018. Just uh, one other slide. This is what we found 20 years after graduation. Compared to the national sample, look at the inactivity level of CPE versus an uh, age match national sample for boys and for girls. And we found among those people 20 years, a moderate activity benefit for boys and a vigorous activity benefit for girls. These are just a few of the findings of that study. But when we asked them other questions, 56% remembered the class content. 50% still use that information. 47% found that the class was useful after graduation and 97% considered themselves to be well informed about fitness and physical activity. And a very interesting finding is that across the 24 years and the three different published studies, all significant differences in all studies favored CPE. You have data to show that your program works if you conduct conceptual physical education. Briefly, I want to mention that there are several college studies in the published literature that show that CPE improves physical activity, knowledge, and attitudes. There are other high school studies that show that many high school students lack knowledge and CPE builds knowledge. And a very recent middle school study done at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro shows that a conceptual physical education program improves physical activity and knowledge of middle school students. Green refers to the PE effect. That is, what does PE do for our students to accomplish our overarching goals? And uh, Ang Chen and colleagues at University of North Carolina and Greensboro suggest in a published article that conceptual physical education builds knowledge that leads to enhanced motivation. And this is the reason for the changes in the improvement and the consistent differences later in life for out of school physical activity. I, I'm going to close my discussion of the dozen reasons with one thing that Pam and I and others have gotten over the years and they say, well, how can you justify having classroom days when kids are not getting enough activity during the day and how can we spend physical activity uh, time in the, in, instead of being in activity, be in the classroom. Well, that's the physical activity question that I want to answer. And here's the answer. We don't claim that uh, conceptual physical education is the only thing. It's only one part of a quality program. 
and it typically can be done in a semester in the high school or a year spread, spread out over a year or in nine weeks or a semester in middle school. With the results that we have just shown, it is very clear that the time spent in the classroom helps teach concepts and self-management skills that can be used throughout life and result in activity that is done throughout life. And spending a few days in the classroom to enhance this knowledge that leads to lifetime activity is well worth it. Plus, it helps provide a base for your other physical education classes that follow a quality conceptual physical education program. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Pam. Thank you, Chuck. School personnel interested in CPE programs can benefit from the experiences of those who have already implemented programs. A few key suggestions include begin with a plan, commit to an inclusive philosophy, such as the HELP philosophy that we described earlier, health and healthy behaviors for everyone for a lifetime that is personal, and being committed to meeting state and national standards for physical education. Next slide, please. Other suggestions for implementation include gaining support of your stakeholders. This includes parents, administrators, school board members, other teachers, other school personnel, and um, most importantly, students. It's also important to maintain program fidelity in order to show that the student learning outcomes are present, particularly related to content knowledge and physical activity. So you can show the effectiveness of your own program. Next slide, please. The National SHIPS Assessment of Programs is conducted periodically to determine what's happening in schools related to health and health curricula. The most recent um, SHIPS, uh, sorry, SHIPS assessments show that most high school students are participating in team sports. Next slide, please. This might not be preparing them well for the types of activities that adults perform. CPE programs address this issue with more of a focus on the students becoming independent in their own participation and also developing their own physical activity and sport programming. Next slide, please. Uh, some additional suggestions for implementation. It's important to get access to resources. For example, Fitness for Life has lots of resources available for teachers um, on their website and available through Human Kinetics. Also consider a pilot CPE program. Um, start with one class or um, start with a couple classes, whatever you're comfortable with, and grow the program over time. And further, it's very important to get professional development, and it's very helpful if professional development is not um, one in service. It, ongoing support can be really helpful for teachers so that they can learn the common content knowledge and the specialized content knowledge that they need to be able to help teach CPE knowledge to their students. Next slide, please. So there are many universities and um, physical education, teacher education programs or PEAT programs that have a class to help prepare um, future teachers to teach CPE. Here are some examples. Here at Arizona State University, we have a CPE class that all of the undergraduates and graduate students take. Um, we have two different classes um, to prepare them to teach CPE in the schools. And there are many other examples. There also is more information about how to run a class at, a te at, at the teacher education level um, for universities included in our Dozen Reasons article in Jobert. So um, please check out that resource for additional information about starting a class at the university level. Thank you, Chuck. 
Okay, I just want to close out with a, a couple of other things. Uh, one is CPE online. Uh, as more and more schools have gone online, and many states are now mandating that every subject matter have online learning, a conceptual physical education is a natural. Uh, Fitness for Life, for example, is widely used online in a, in a number of places. Uh, and part of the reason is because there are interactive web text, digital text on all platforms. Uh, and teacher resources and student assignments that can be modified to suit local needs. You know, they're in a format that you can change them. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Google Classroom and your own platforms that you have in, in schools can be used. Uh, we do have a webinar that we did a, a while back on how to use uh, Google Classroom uh, with CPE, and we'll include this in the resources. And if you want to take, take a screen capture, uh, that's the uh, link that would go to that, uh, that uh, information. We also have other sources, and rather than you trying to get this information now, we'll make sure that it's included in a handout that goes along with the resources associated uh, with this program. So uh, I just want to take this last uh, moment to say thank you very much for uh, signing on and, and listening and learning with us. Uh, thank you also to Ben, who uh, was so busy with his uh, uh, current work that uh, he left this to us to perform. Thank you, Pam, for uh, your work on this uh, uh, presentation, and we hope you found it useful.